Hi, welcome to this Court Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the angles and polygons practice questions. If you need any extra help on angles and polygons, if you go to courtmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 32, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on finding angles and polygons. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code and it'll bring you straight to that video. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. So here's question number one. Question number one, we've got this pentagon. It's got one, two, three, four, five sides. And we've been asked to calculate the size of angle X. We've been asked to calculate the size of this angle. Now, because it's a pentagon, the angles in a pentagon will add up to 540 degrees. Now, you could remember that in a triangle, it's 180 degrees. In a quadrilateral, it's 360 degrees. And every single time you add another side, you could add another 180 degrees. Alternatively, you could use the formula N take away 2, multiply by 180. And that's the number of sides. So for a pentagon, it's five sides. We take away 2, that's 3. And then times by 180, that's going to be 540. Alternatively, you could just learn that a pentagon, the angles add up to 540 degrees and I tend to learn that a pentagon they add up to 540 and for hexagon they add up to 720 and they're just ones that I know off by heart. Okay but part A asks us to calculate the size of this angle and it's a non-calculator question so let's uh, add up the angles we've been given. So we've got this 160 degrees, we've got this angle here of 115 degrees, this is a right angle so it's 90 degrees and here's another right angle so it's another 90 degrees. So let's add together our 160, our 115, our 90 and 90 and they'll be the angles that we've been given and then if we take them away from 540 so 540 degrees then that will tell us what's left now it'll be the size of angle x so let's add the angles we've been given 160 115 90 and 90 and when we add those up we get 0 plus 5 is 5 plus 0 plus 0 is 5 so we've got 5 and then 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 9 is equal to 16 plus 9 is 25 so it's going to be 5 and then carry 2 and then 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4 so these four angles add up to 455 degrees so if we take those away from 540 that's the size of this angle so 540 take away 455 degrees and when we do that we get 0 take away 5 we can't do so let's borrow so that's a 3 and a 10 10 take away 5 is 5 3 take away 5 again we're going to need to borrow so cross off the 5 that's now 4 and that's 13 13 take away 5 is 8 and 4 take away 4 is 0 so that means the size of this angle is 85 degrees so let's write that down 85 degrees okay let's have a look at part b Part B, we've been given a different shape, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six angles. So it's a hexagon, so it's got six sides. And we've been asked to calculate the sides of this angle Y. Now, again, you could know that a pentagon is 540, and if you add another 180, that's the size of the angles inside of this shape, which would be 720. Alternatively, you could just learn that the angles in a hexagon add up to 720 degrees, and that's just something I tend to, to learn. So the angles in a hexagon add up to 720 degrees. We've got this right angle, so let's put 90 degrees said that one and if we add up the one two three four five angles that we know and take them away from 720 degrees that'll leave us with the size of y so let's do that so 170 130 90 110 and 75 and just check we've got one two three four five one two three four five just making sure we've got them all fantastic now let's add those angles up so zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus five is five seven plus three is ten plus nine is nineteen plus one is twenty plus seven is twenty seven so that's seven and then put a two over and then we've got one plus one is two plus one is three plus two is five so that means the angles we've been given add up to 575 degrees and if we take them away from 720 that's the size of this angle y so 720 take away 575 zero take away five we can't do so let's borrow so that's one and ten ten take away five is five one take away seven again we're going to need to borrow so six and eleven eleven take away seven is four and six take away five is one so it means the size of y is 145 degrees so that means that y is 145 degrees okay let's have a look at our next question Okay, question number two. So question number two says a hexagon below, so the hexagon below has two right angles. So we've got these two right angles. I'm just going to write 90 degrees beside each of them. So 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And the other four angles are all equal. So the other four angles are all equal. And we've been asked to work out the size of angle X. 
Well, because it's a hexagon, the angles on a hexagon add up to 720 degrees. And that's quite useful to know that the angles on a hexagon add up to 720 degrees. And we've been told that the other four angles are equal to that if this is x, this is x, this is x, and this is x. So that means that if we add up our two 90s, so if we add up 90 plus 90, that's 180. And if we take that away from 720, that'll tell us how many degrees are left. And because all of these four angles are equal, we can just divide by four, and that will tell us the size of each one of these angles. So let's do that. So 90 plus 90 is equal to 180 degrees. So these two angles add up together to be 180 degrees. Let's take that away from 720. So 720 take away 180. Zero take away zero is zero. Two take away eight we can't do, so let's borrow. So that's now six and 12. 12 take away 8 is 4, and 6 take away 1 is 5. So that means we've got 540 degrees. Because it's a hexagon, all the six angles would have to add up together to be 720. If these two add up to be 180, it means the other four angles will have to add up together to be 540 degrees. But we've been told that they're all equal. So that means that we can just divide this by 4, because it's 1, 2, 3, 4 equal angles, and it'll tell us the size of each of them. So 540 divided by 4. How many 4s go into 5? That's 1, remainder 1. How many 4s go into 14? That'll be 3. 3 4s are 12, remainder 2. And how many 4s go into 20? That'll be 5. So that'll be 135 degrees. So that means that that's a 135 degree angle, that's a 135 degree angle, that's a 135 degree angle, and that's a 135 degree angle. And if we really wanted to, we could add those six angles up and we should get 720. And that's it. So we'll work out the value of the angle x, that's 135 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number three, and it's a calculator question, so we can grab our calculators if we want to. And we've been given a heptagon, so it should have seven sides and seven angles. Let's check the angles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's got seven interior angles. And we've been asked to calculate the size of angle X, so the size of this angle. And this angle, it's a reflex angle, or it looks like a reflex angle. It looks like an angle that's bigger than a straight line. So whenever we're working out, we should potentially get an angle that's bigger than 180 degrees. So let's have a look at our angles that we've been given. So we've been given these six angles and if we take those six angles away from what the angles in a heptagon add up to we can find the size of this angle so because it's a heptagon let's find what the angles add up to now I tend to know that a pentagon is 540 degrees the angles in a hexagon add up to 720 degrees so we could add on another 180 degrees because every single time we add on another side we add another 180 degrees to the interior angles so 720 plus another 180 would be 900 degrees so we could do that alternatively we could use the formula so so the formula to work out the sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 multiplied by 180 degrees. So if we take the number of sides, which in this case is 7, and we do 7 take away 2, and 7 take away 2 is going to be 5, so if we do 5 multiplied by 180, that'll be what the angles inside of the shape will add up to. So 5 multiplied by 180, and it's a calculator question, is 900 degrees. So that means the angles inside of a heptagon will add together to be 900 degrees. So we want to work out the size of this angle, so let's add up these six angles we've been given and take them away from 900 degrees. So let's do that. So we'll do 91 plus 152 plus 138 plus 56 plus 145 plus 120. And what I would say in a question like this is it's very important that you don't mistype any of these angles. So you make sure that you write them and type them in into your calculator exactly as they are. So we've got 91 plus 152 plus 138 plus 56 plus 145 plus 120. And I've got that equal to 702 degrees. And then if we take that away from 900 degrees, what the angles in a heptagon add up to, we can find the size of this angle X. So 900 degrees take away 702 degrees would be equal to 900 take away 702 is equal to 198 degrees. So that means that this angle is 198 degrees. And let's write that down. And that's it. So to find the size of this missing angle, because it's a heptagon, we've done 7 take away 2, which is 5, and multiply that by 180. That means that the angles inside of this shape will add up together to be 900 degrees. We added up these angles, and be very careful with that addition. And if you've got spare time in the exam, add them up together again and make sure you get 702. And then take that away from 900, and then that'll be the size of this angle, which is 198 degrees.
Okay, let's have a look at question number four. So question number four says, show and blow is a regular pentagon. So we've got this regular pentagon, and we've been asked to find the size of each interior angle. Now, because it's a regular pentagon, that means each of the sides are the same length and each of the angles are the same size. So if we can find out what the angles in the pentagon add up to, we can just divide it by five to find the size of each interior angle. Now, because it's a pentagon, we know they add up together to be 540 degrees. And if we needed to show why it's 540, we could do five, the number of sides, take away two, which is three, and then multiply by 180 and that's equal to 540 degrees but we've just been asked to find the sides of this interior angle so we can just take our 540 degrees what the angles add up to inside of the shape and just divide it by five because each of these angles are the same size and it's a non-calculator question so we're going to need to do 540 divided by five five goes into five once five goes into four well it doesn't so it's going to be zero remainder four and how many fives go into 40 that'll be eight so it means that each angle is 108 degrees so let's write that down 108 degrees and that's it Okay, and then part B. Part B says three identical regular pentagons. So we've got three identical regular pentagons or three congruent regular pentagons, and they're joined together as shown. So we've got these three pentagons that have been put together here at this point here. And we've been asked to find the size of this angle or Y. Now if we have a look here, we've got three pentagons. So that means that this angle would be 108 degrees, this angle would be 108 degrees, and this angle would be 108 degrees because they're all regular pentagons. And here we've got one point and we've got four angles at this point. We've got the 108, the 108, the 108, and Y. So if we add up together three 108s, that'll be the size of the angles in the pentagons. And then if we just take that away from 360, we can then see what's left for Y. So let's do that. So let's do 108 plus 108 plus 108, so just adding together three 108, so you could just do 108 multiplied by three. Eight plus eight plus eight is 24, so four, and then carry our two. Zero plus zero plus zero plus two is two, and one plus one plus one is three. So that means that these three angles will add together to be 324 degrees. Now the angles at a point add together to be 360 degrees. So if we take those 324 degrees away from the 360, we can see what's left for Y. So 360 subtract 324. And let's do that. So 0 take away 4, we can't do, so let's borrow. So 5 and then 10. 10 take away 4 is 6. 5 take away 2 is 3. And 3 take away 3 is 0. So that means that Y would be 36 degrees. And that's it. So Y is 36 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says, shown below is a regular hexagon, A, B, C, D, E, F. So we've got this regular hexagon. So it's a regular hexagon. That means that each of the angles are the same size inside of the shape. And because it's a hexagon, that means that the angles would add up together to be 720 degrees. And if we divide that by six, now it's a non-calculator question. So if we do 720 divided by six. So six is going to seven once, remainder one. How many six is going to 12? That's two. And how many six is going to zero? That's zero. So it means that each of the angles is 100 120 degrees. So it means that's 120 degrees. It means that this angle is 120 degrees. It means that this whole angle here is 120 degrees. This angle here would be 120 degrees. And this angle here is 120 degrees. And also this whole angle here is 120 degrees. And actually, if we read the question, we've been asked to calculate the size of angle X. We've been asked to calculate the size of this angle. Now, what's great here is if we have a look here, this is a regular hexagon. So that means that this triangle here will be an isosceles triangle because this side is the same length is this side because it's a regular hexagon those two sides have got the same length so that length is the same as that length so it means this is an isosceles triangle so it means that this angle is x and this angle at the top here is x as well so if we focus on this triangle if we do 180 take away 120 that's equal to 60 so that means that these two angles together will add together to be 60 and then if we do 60 divided by 2 that's equal to 30 so that means that this angle x is equal to 30 degrees and this angle at the top here which we haven't been asked to work out but it's also 30 degrees because it's an isosceles triangle so that means that x is 30 degrees and let's write that down so x is 30 degrees and that's it. Another way to that question was, because we knew the whole angle here was 120 degrees, and here, if we join it up from B to D, that means that that's gonna be a right angle. So we could have just taken 90 away from 120, and that would leave us with 30. So often with these angles and polygons questions, there might be more than one way to approach them. And so you could have considered that isosceles triangle, or you could have considered that whole angle being 120, that being a right angle, and then that being 30 degrees. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. And question number six says, shown below is a regular pentagon, A, B, C, D, E. So this is a regular pentagon. That means all the sides of the same length and each of the interior angles of the pentagon are the same size as well. And part A says, work out the size of angle X. So we want to work out the size of this angle here. Now, this is just one of the interior angles of the pentagon. So let's work out the size of that angle. So the angles in a pentagon add up together to be 540 degrees. So that means the angles inside of the regular pentagon add up together to be 540 degrees. Now, because x is just one of those interior angles, we can just do 540 divided by 5, and that's the size of that angle. So let's do that. So we'll do 540 divided by 5. So 5 goes into 5 once. 5 doesn't go into 4, so that's 0 remainder 4. And how many 5s go into 40? That's 8. So that means that each interior angle of the regular pentagon is 108 degrees. And x is one of those interior angles, so x is 108 degrees. Okay, and part B. Part B says calculate the size of angle Y or work out angle Y. So we want to work out the size of this angle. Now, this was a regular pentagon. If we go back up, it's a regular pentagon. That means that each of the sides have got the same length. So if we look at this triangle here, so that means that this length going from C to D would be the same as the length going from B to C. So this is an isosceles triangle. That length is the same as that length. So this is an isosceles triangle. And that means that this angle here is the same size as this angle here. So it means that y is the same size as this angle here. So it means if we take our 108 degrees away from 180, that'll leave us with the size of these two angles. And then if we divide by 2, because it's isosceles, we can find the size of this angle y. So let's take the 108 degrees away from 180 degrees and then divide by 2. So 180 take away 108, that's equal to 0 take away 8, we can't do, so let's borrow. So it's going to be a 7 and a 10. 10 take away 8 is 2. 7 take away 0 is 7, and 1 take away 1 is 0. So that means that the two angles, the y and the 1 over here, those two angles will add together to be 72 degrees. Now if we divide by 2, we can find the size of y. So let's take our 72 and divide it by 2. So 2 goes into 7 3 times, remainder 1, and 2 goes into 12 6 times. So 72 divided by 2, or half of 72, would be 36. So that means that y is 36 degrees, and that's it. And if we just go back up, that means that this angle would be 36 degrees, and this angle up here would be 36 degrees. And if we add together our 108, our 36, and our 36, that'd be 180, and that's it. So the size of angle X is 108 degrees, and the size of angle Y is 36 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question number seven. So question number seven says, shown as a regular hexagon and a regular octagon. So this hexagon and this octagon, they're both regular. And we've been asked to work out the size of angle of Y. So we've been asked to work out the size of this angle here. So if we have a look here, we've got three angles that meet at a point. We've got this angle, this angle, and Y. And they all meet at a point. So that means that these three angles will add together to be 360 degrees. So we need to find the size of each interior angle of the hexagon and the size of each interior angle of the octagon, and then we can take those two away from 360 to find the size of y. So let's do that. So let's start off with our hexagon. So the angles in a hexagon add up together to be 720 degrees. That's the size of the interior angles. And if we divide that by 6, the number of angles, that'll be the size of each interior angle. So 720 divided by 6. So 6 goes into 7 once, remainder 1. 6 goes into 12 twice, and 6 goes into 0, 0 times. So that's 120 degrees. So the size of this angle is 120 degrees. That's the size of each interior angle of that regular hexagon. Now in terms of our regular octagon, uh, the angles in an octagon, well, I'm actually going to use the formula. I'm going to do 8, the number of sides, take away 2, and I'm going to times that by 180. And that will tell me what the angles inside of a regular octagon will add up together to be. So 8 take away 2 is 6, so we're going to do 6 times 180. And this is a non-calculator question, unfortunately. So I'm going to do 180 multiplied by 6. So 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 8 is 48. So let's put our 8 down and carry our 4. And 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10. So that means the angles inside of a regular octagon will add together to be 1080 degrees. Now this is a regular octagon, so each of the angles are the same, and there's 8 of them. So if we divide this by 8, we can find the size of that angle there. So 1080 divided by 8. So 8 into 1, that's 0, remainder 1. 8 into 10 goes once, remainder 2. 8 into 28, well, 8, 16, 24, that's 3, remainder 4. And how many 8s go into 40? That's 5. So that means that each interior angle of a regular octagon is 135 degrees. Fantastic. So now we can add those two angles together, the 120 and the 135, and then take them away from 360, and that leaves us with what Y is. So let's do that. So we'll do our 135 plus 120. 5 plus 0 is 5. 
3 plus 2 is 5, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So that is 255 degrees. And then if we do 360, take away 255, that's going to be the sides of angle Y. So 0 take away 5 we can't do, so let's borrow. So it's a 5 and a 1. 10 take away 5 is 5. 5 take away 5 is 0, and 3 take away 2 is 1. So that means that y is 105 degrees, and that's it. So the size of angle y is 105 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at question number 8. So question number 8 says a regular polygon has 12 sides. So it's a 12-sided polygon, and we've been asked to work out the size of each interior angle. So the size of each angle inside of that regular polygon, that 12-sided regular polygon. Now, there's two different ways which you can approach this question. Well, there may be more, but there's two different ways I'm going to approach this question. So let's use approach 1, so method 1. This is my first approach to find the size of each interior angle of this regular 12-sided polygon. So first of all, there's 12 sides. So if we do 12, the number of sides, take away 2, and then multiply multiply that by 180 degrees, we'll find out the sum of the interior angles. So what all the angles inside of this 12-sided polygon will add up together to be. 12 take away 2 is 10, so we've got 10 multiplied by 180, and 10 times 180 is 1,800. That means the angles inside of this 12-sided polygon will add up to be 1,800 degrees. Now, if there's 12 sides, there's 12 angles, so that means if we divide this by 12, we can find the size of each interior angle. So if we do 1,800, divided by 12, that will tell us the size of each interior angle because they're all the same size because it's regular. So if we do 1,800 divided by 12, that's equal to 150. So that means each interior angle is 150 degrees. So that's our answer, 150 degrees. So that's method one. There is another approach that is quite common, which I actually would use sometimes, and that is that instead of working at the size of the interior angle to begin with, you can work at the size of the exterior angle. And all of the exterior angles of any polygon will add up to be 360 degrees. So if we take 360 degrees and we divide that by 12, that will tell us the size of each exterior angle. And 360 degrees, so 360 divided by 12 is equal to 30 degrees. And because it's a regular polygon, each of the exterior angles are the same size, so each exterior angle is 30 degrees. Now, an interior angle and an exterior angle, they form a straight line. So an interior angle and exterior angle, they will add together to be 180 degrees. So if we do 180, take away 30, we'll find the size of each interior angle. And 180, take away 30, is 150 degrees. And that's it. So that's another approach. And you can either use method 1, which is finding the sum of all the interior angles by doing n minus 2 times 180, and you'll get 1,800. And then just divide that by 12, because there's 12 angles, and that'll be 150 degrees. Alternatively, you could say all the exterior angles add up to be 360 degrees. If you divide that by 12, you'll find the size of each exterior angle. And then if you take that away from 180, you'll find the size of each interior angle which is again 150 degrees okay let's have a look at our next question okay let's have a look at our next question question number nine and question number nine we've got this regular pentagon and we've been asked to explain why the sum of the interior angles of this regular pentagon is 540 degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with one of the points. I'm just going to choose this point here. Now you could choose the one at the top or this one or this one or this one. I'm just going to choose this one. And I'm going to connect it up to some other points in the triangle. So I'm going to connect it up to this one. Well, it's already connected to this one. It's already connected to this one. So I'm going to connect it up to that one. And I'm going to connect it up to this point here as well. So we're just going to join lines joining that point to that point and that point to that point. And as you can see, we've formed three triangles. We've got this triangle at the top. We've got this triangle here. And we've got this triangle at the bottom. And if we look at the angles inside of those triangles, so we've got triangle one, triangle two, and triangle three. And let's look at triangle one. We've got this angle, we've got this angle, and we've got this angle. And then we've got triangle two, which is this angle, this angle, and this angle. And we've got triangle three, which is this angle, this angle, and this angle. And the angles of the triangles, they form the angles of the pentagon. Obviously, you've got this angle, then you've got this bit, this bit, and this bit, and those three angles were formed together to be the angle of the pentagon. We've got this angle and this angle, and they formed together to be that angle of the pentagon. This angle and this angle were formed together to be this angle of the pentagon, and obviously, you've got this one here. So that means that the three triangles form the pentagon. The angles of the three triangles form the pentagon. So that means that if we do three times 180 degrees, that would be 540 degrees. And that's why the angles in a pentagon add up to be 540 degrees, because it can be divided into three triangles. And that's why it's the number of sides take away two, because that would then tell us the number of triangles that form together to form each polygon. So let's write that down. And that's it. So I've just written down the sum of the angles in each triangle is 180 degrees. There are three triangles that form the pentagon. So three multiplied by 180 is 540 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. So question number 10 says, shown below is a regular hexagon. So we've got this regular hexagon and it's got an exterior angle labeled Y. So this exterior angle is labeled Y. So we've got the interior angle and we've got the exterior angle. And we've been asked to work out the size of each exterior angle. So we've got a few different ways we can do this. We could take the sum of the interior angles, which would be for a hexagon, that's 720 degrees. We could divide that by six, and if we do 720 divided by six, and that's a non-calculator question, but we've already done it a few times in this video already. I know that's 120 degrees. You could use your bus shelter method if you wish there. And that means that each interior angle is 120 degrees. So that means that this angle is 120 degrees. Now obviously this makes a straight line, so if we do 180, subtract 120, that's gonna be equal to 60. So that means that y is equal to 60 degrees, and that's it. So y equals 60 degrees. So that means that each exterior angle, because it's a regular hexagon, each exterior angle will be 60 degrees. So that's one way we could do that question. Alternatively, because it's the exterior angles, all of the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 degrees. And because it's a regular hexagon, each of those exterior angles will be the same size. So if we just do 360 divided by 6, that'll be 60. And that means that each exterior angle is 60 degrees. And that's it. So Y is 60 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at question number 11. So question number 11 says a regular polygon has 24 sides. Work out the size of each exterior angle. Now obviously we've got two different approaches, but one approach is much more easier than the other one. So I think it'd be, you know, make more sense to use the exterior angles and just consider those. So all of the exterior angles of every polygon will add together to be 360 degrees. Now because it's regular, each of the exterior angles is the same size. And if there's 24 sides, there's 24 exterior angles. So if we just take 360 and divide that by 24, we'll find the size of each exterior angle. So let's do that. 360 degrees divided by 24 is equal to 15 degrees. So that means each exterior angle is 15 degrees. Now that's it. And that's two marks. Now, what, you know, you could use the other approach. You could say it's 24 sides, take away two. That's 22 times that by 180. That'll be the sum of the interior angles. Divide that by 24 to find the size of each one. Take that away from 180 and then that'll be 15. You could use that approach if you wish, but I would tend to use that approach. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12 says, each exterior angle of a regular polygon is 20 degrees. Work out the number of sides of the polygon. So all of the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 degrees. And because it's regular, they're all the same size and they're all 20 degrees. So if we see how many 20 degree angles fit into 360 degrees, that'll tell us how many exterior angles there are. And then the number of exterior angles is the number of the sides. So we can just do 360 divided by 20. And that's a non-calculator question. So 360 divided by 20. 20 goes into three, we'll add zero, remainder three. How many 20s go into 36? That's one, remainder 16. And how many 20s go into 160? That'll be eight. So that means that there's 18 exterior angles, each of them 20 degrees. And if there's 18 exterior angles, there's 18 sides. So how many sides does the polygon have? 18, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. So question number 13 says, each interior angle of a regular polygon is 174 degrees. Work out the number of sides of the regular polygon. So because we know the sides of each interior angle as regular polygon, that's important because if each of the interior angles is 174 degrees, we can do 180 take away 174 to find the size of each exterior angle. And 180 take away 174 would be six degrees. So that means that each exterior angle is six degrees. Now remember, all of the exterior angles will always add together to be 360. So if we do 360 divided by six, that will tell us the number of exterior angles and the number of exterior angles will be the same as the number of sides. So that'll tell us the number of sides the polygon's got. So if we do 360 divided by six, so how many six is going to three? That's zero remainder three. How many six is going to 36? That's six. And how many six is going to zero? That's zero. So that's 60. So that means there's going to be 60 exterior angles. And that means if the 60 exterior angles, there's going to be 60 sides. And that's it, so 60 sides. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14 says, the interior angle of a regular polygon is 135 degrees. Work out the number of sides of the polygon. Now, actually, I actually remember seeing this earlier on in this video. Whenever we had an octagon, I think the interior angle was 135 degrees. And you'll actually start to spot some of these angles and recognize the shape straight away. Um, or maybe that's just me. <laughs> anyway, it says the interior angle of a regular polygon is 135 degrees. So because it's regular, 
we can do 180 take away 135 to find the size of each exterior angle. And 180 take away 135 would be 45 degrees. So that means each exterior angle is 45 degrees. And if we take, well, all the exterior angles will always add together to be 360. So if we do 360 divided by 45, that will tell us the number of exterior angles, which is the same as the number of sides. And hopefully that will tell us that it is an octagon. So let's consider 45. So 45, then 90. 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and then 360. And so that means there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 exterior angles. And if there's 8 exterior angles, that means there's 8 sides. So it is an octagon. And that's it. Fantastic. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 15. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 15. And question number 15 says, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, <laughs> test of my alphabet there, is a regular octagon. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and we've got O, which is the center of the regular octagon. And we've been asked to calculate the size of angle A, O, B. So A, O, B. I'm actually just gonna draw that on. I'm actually just gonna use a ruler, and I'm just gonna draw a ruler and pencil, and I'm gonna go from here to here, and from here to here. And so that's going to give us then that this angle here inside here is angle AOB. So angle AOB. So we want to find the size of this angle AOB. Now, one thing I notice is if we join the center of the octagon to each one of the vertices of the octagon, so each one of these letters, what you'd notice is that we would have eight triangles, eight identical triangles. So if we do 360, the angles at a point, divide that by eight, because it would be eight triangles, that would tell us the size of this angle. So let's do that. So let's take our 300. 360 and it's a calculator question divided by 8 and that's equal to 45 degrees so that means that this angle here is 45 degrees so that means the angle AOB is 45 degrees so let's write that down 45 degrees okay and then if we have a look at part B part B says calculate the size of angle ABC so let's have a look a, B, C. So we want to find the size of this angle A, B, C. So I'm just going to mark it on that, so that angle there. Now actually, there's a couple of ways we can do this. One way is we could actually just consider the silver triangle here. And we could say, well, we've got these two triangles. And if we work out the size of this angle and work out the size of this angle and add them together, that'll be the size of angle A, B, C, that obtuse angle there. So let's do that to begin with. So these triangles are identical. They're congruent. So that means that this is a 45 degree angle as well. And if you notice, if we join from O to A and from O to B, that means that those sides will be the same length. So this is an isosceles triangle. So this triangle is isosceles. So let's take 45 degrees away from 180. And then that'll tell us what these two angles will add up together to be. And then just divide it by 2 to find the size of this one. So let's do that. So 180 degrees subtract 45 degrees will be equal to 135 degrees. That means that these two angles will be added up together to be 135 degrees. And then if we do 135 divided by 2, now this is a calculator question, so that's quite nice. That's equal to 67.5 degrees so it means that this angle is 67.5 degrees and this angle is 67.5 degrees and if we add those two angles together so if we do 67.5 plus 67.5 that would tell us the size of this angle here and 67.5 plus 67.5 would be 135 degrees so that means the angle a b c so a b c that angle is 135 degrees so that's one way you could have done that question alternatively because it's a regular octagon you could have just said well the angles in a regular octagon well there's eight sides so we could do eight take away two which is equal to six and then times by 180 that's equal to 1080 degrees and then we could just divide that by eight because it's eight interior angles so dividing that by eight will be 135 degrees and um, so that's two different approaches to which way you could approach that to find angle a b c and there's obviously other approaches too and that's it so angle a b c is 135 degrees Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 16. So question number 16 says, and it's a non-calculator question, Martin has drawn a regular nonagon, which is a nine-sided polygon. I've been asked to work out the sides of each exterior angle. So remember, the exterior angles always add up together to give us 360 degrees, and we just need to divide that by nine, and that will tell us the size of each exterior angle because it's a regular nonagon, so each of those exterior angles are the same. So how many nines go into three? Zero, remainder three. How many nines go into 36? That's four. And how many nines go into zero? That's zero. So that means that each exterior angle is 40 degrees. I've been asked to work out the size of each interior angle. So remember the interior angle and the exterior angle, they form a straight line. So if we take our 40 degrees away from 180, that'll be the size of each interior angle. So 180 take away 40 is 140 degrees. That's 140 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 17. 
OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 17. Now, I really like this question. So we've got shown below is an interior angle from a regular polygon. So we've got this regular polygon, and this is just one of the angles. So it must be a really big regular polygon, and this is just one of the angles. And we've been asked to calculate the number of sides the polygon has. So because it's regular, each of the interior angles is 175 degrees. So if that's the interior angle, let's find the exterior angle. I'm actually just going to do a dashed line there. It should be a straight line, so that's a straight line. <laughs> and if the interior angle is 175 degrees, because the interior angle and the exterior angle make a straight line, that means that if we take 175 away from 180, we'll find that this angle is 5 degrees. So that's the size of each exterior angle. And all the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 degrees. So if we do 360 divided by 5, that will tell us how many exterior angles there are, and then that will mean that we know how many sides the polygon has. So let's do that. So 360 divided by 5. How many 5s go into 3? 0 remainder 3. How many 5s go into 36? Well, that's going to be, well, 7 times 5 is 35, so it's going to be 7 remainder 1. And how many 5s go into 10? That's going to be 2. So that means there's 72 exterior angles, and if there's 72 exterior angles, that means there's 72 sides. So that regular polygon has got 72 sides, and that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. So Isaac wants to work out the size of each exterior angle of a regular 12-sided polygon. So it's a regular 12-sided polygon, and Isaac wants to work out the size of each exterior angle. And here's his working out. So he, he takes a number of sides, so 12 sides. He takes away 2, and he times by 180. So 12 take away 2 is 10, times by 180 is 1,800. So that's the sum of the interior angles. He then divides that by 12, um, obviously has to find the size of each interior angle of that regular 12-sided polygon, and 1,800 divided by 12 is 150. Seems about right. We could use the bush shelter method if we wanted to test that, um, but I'm just going to leave that for the minute because I think it, it looks about right. So that's the size of each interior angle. Now, He's then taken that interior angle away from 360 to find the size of each exterior angle. Now, that's not going to be right. The interior angle and the exterior angle will always add together to be 180 degrees. So that means that he should be taking the size of each interior angle away from 180 degrees. So he should be doing it. That shouldn't be 360. It should be 180 take away 150, which would be equal to 30 degrees. So that means that each exterior angle should be 30 degrees, not 210 degrees. So he has taken it away from the wrong number. He should have subtracted. 150 from 180, not 360. So let's write that down. And that's it. So I've just written down that Isaac should have subtracted 150 degrees from 180 degrees, not 360 degrees, because the interior plus exterior equals 180 degrees, not 360. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 19. OK, let's have a look at our next question, question number 19. So question number 19 says the diagram shows a pentagon. So we've got this pentagon, and we've got some algebraic expressions for each one of the angles. So this is x degrees, this is 2x degrees, this is x plus 23 degrees, this angle is x plus 40 degrees, and this angle is x plus 9 degrees. And we've been asked to work out the size of the largest angle in the pentagon. So if we want to find the size of the largest angle, we're going to really need to know what x is. So we need to find the size of x to begin with, and then we can find out the size of each angle. So because it's a pentagon, the angles on a pentagon will add up together to be 540 degrees. So let's add up the algebraic expressions for each of the angles, and then put that equal to 540 degrees, and then that'll give us an equation. And then we can solve that to find the size of x. And then once we find the size of x, we can work out the size of each angle. So let's do that. So let's add up together the expressions for each of the angles. So we've got x plus 2x plus x plus 23 degrees plus x plus 40 degrees plus x plus 9 degrees. I'm just going to put those in brackets just because um, sometimes you might have a subtract and I just always tend to put them in brackets. So we've got x plus 2x plus x plus 23 degrees plus x plus 40 degrees plus x plus 9 degrees and that's equal to 540 degrees. So let's simplify this. We've got x plus 2x, that's 3x, plus another x, that's 4x, 5x, 6x, so we've got 6x's plus, and then we've got 23 plus 40 plus 9, and 23 plus 40 plus 9, 23 plus 40 plus 9 is a calculator question, is equal to 72 degrees, and that's equal to 540 degrees, because these angles will add up together to be 540 degrees. So we've got an equation, we now just need to solve it, and then that will give us the size of x, and then we can work out the size of each angle. So let's take away 72 from the left-hand side, and take away 72 from the right-hand side. So we'll be left with 6x on the left-hand side, 
and on the right hand side of the equation we've got 540 take away 72 and that's equal to 468 degrees now we don't want 6x we just want x so we don't want 6 times x so let's divide both sides by 6 so divide by 6 and divide by 6 the left hand side we had 6x we've divided by 6 to get rid of the 6 so I'm just going to leave us with 1x or x and on the right hand side we had 468 and we're going to divide that by 6 and that's equal to 78 degrees so that means the x is 78 degrees so let's write that down x is equal to 78 degrees now if we go back up to our pentagon we need to find the sides of each angle we want to find the sides of the largest angle so the angle at the top here that's going to be 78 degrees that's quite straightforward this one here that's 2x so that's 78 degrees this one's 2x so 2 times 78 is equal to 156 degrees this one over here we've got 78 plus 23 that's equal to 101 degrees this angle will be 78 plus 40 that's equal to 118 degrees. And this angle down here, it's going to be 78 plus 9. That's equal to 87 degrees. And the question asks us to work at the sides of the largest angle. So it's going to be this one, which is 156 degrees. So let's write that down. 156 degrees. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 20. So question number 20 says, the diagram shows part of two regular polygons, A and B. So we've got regular polygon A and regular polygon B. And it says that A has got 10 sides and the exterior angle is 3x. And we're told that B has got an exterior angle of 2x. And we've been asked to work out the number of sides regular polygon B has. So first of all, if we look at A, it's got 10 sides. Now we know that all of the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 degrees. So if we do 360 degrees divided by 10, because it's got 10 sides, so it's got 10 exterior angles, and 360 divided by 10 is equal to 36 degrees. So that means that this angle here is 36 degrees. But we've been told that it's 3x, so that means that 3x is equal to 36 degrees. And then if we divide by 3 and divide by 3, we'll find out what x is. So dividing by 3, we get x is equal to, and 36 divided by 3 is 12. So that means that x is equal to 12. So just to recap, we knew that the exterior angle here would be 36 degrees because 360 divided by 10 is 36. We then put 3x equal to the 36 and got that x is equal to 12. Now if we go over here, this angle is 2x. So that means that if we multiply 12 by 2, that's going to be 24 degrees. So that means the size of this exterior angle is 24 degrees. And because it's a regular polygon, that means all the exterior angles in this polygon have got a size of 24 degrees. So that means if we take the sum of the exterior angles, which would be 360, and divide that by 24, that would tell us how many exterior angles there are. And then that would tell us how many sides there are. So 360 divided by 24 is equal to 15. So there's 15 exterior angles, so that means there's 15 sides. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 21. So question number 21 says, the diagram below shows part of a regular polygon. So we've actually had a question like this already earlier on in the booklet. And we've been asked to work out the size of each exterior angle. So this is the interior angle. And we want to find the size of each exterior angle. So remember the interior angle and the exterior angle, they form a straight line. They form a straight line. So let's just carry that on. So if that's the interior angle, this could be the exterior angle. And they add together to be 180 degrees. So if we do 180, take away 172.5 degrees, that's going to be equal to 7.5 degrees so that means each exterior angle is 7.5 degrees and it's a calculator question so that's quite nice so 7.5 degrees and part b says work out the number of sides the polygon has so obviously all the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 degrees so if we do 360 divided by 7.5 on our calculator that'll tell us how many sides the polygon has so 360 divided by 7.5 is equal to 48 so it's a regular 48 sided polygon and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 22. So question number 22 says, explain why a regular octagon will not tessellate. So the word tessellate means to fit together without any spaces. So for instance, if you've got squares, you can fit them together perfectly and there's no gaps between them. Or if you had equilateral triangles, you can fit them perfectly together and there won't be any spaces between them. Or here we've got some regular hexagons and as you can see, they fit together perfectly as well. And I think of whenever I see this, I think of the Giants Causeway in Northern Ireland, where you've got these hexagonal prisms, these hexagonal stones 
they fit together perfectly if any spaces between them and you can go there and jump on them and it's a fantastic day out and I don't know why I'm advertising it but I should work for the tourist board perhaps but um, to tessellate means to fit together perfectly if any spaces now it's not a term that you need to know for the current 9 to 1 GCSE MAV so you you know it's, you're not going to be given a question like this without explaining to you what tessellation means um, but this is a question which I think is quite useful to have in this booklet because I think it's just a nice idea to introduce what you know you know tessellations are and why some ships tessellate and why some ships don't um, so the question says explain why a regular octagon will not tessellate now going back to the hexagons we looked at this question previously before where we've looked at the hexagon and found that each interior angle was 120 degrees so that's 120 degrees this angle is 120 degrees and this angle here is 120 degrees and as you can see these three angles will add together to be 360 degrees so for these polygons to tessellate the angles will have to add up together to be 360 degrees so whenever we fit together six equilateral triangles those angles each equilateral triangle has got a 60 degree angle and six of them will be 360 degrees so that's why equilateral triangles will tessellate squares they'll tessellate because each of those angles are 90 degrees and four of them will form together to be 360 degrees now in terms of these octagons they don't tessellate and the reason is if we focus on this point here we've got this angle and this angle and let's see what these angles are so now in terms of this octagon the interior angles will add together to be 1080 degrees and if we divide that by eight the number of angles the number of interior angles that's equal to 135 degrees and we've looked at that again previously in this video so that means that this angle is 135 degrees this angle here is 135 degrees and if we add those together 135 plus 135 that's equal to 270 degrees now there's not enough room here for another 135 degree angle there's only here a 90 degree angle if we do 360 take away 270 that's only 90 degrees so that's a right angle it's not enough space for another octagon so regular octagons will not tessellate because two of them will fit together to make 270 degrees but there's not enough room for the third one actually you could put in squares in there and then you can make a pattern of octagons and squares and it looks pretty cool too um, but regular octagons on their own will not tessellate so let's explain that and that's it so I've just written down that two octagons join together to make an angle of 270 degrees and there's not enough room for the third octagon but a square would fit and that's it um, but as I said the term tessellate it's not something that you need to if you're doing the 9 to 1 GCSE you don't need to know what that word means but they might explain to you in the context of a question what it means and then um, you could then maybe be asked to answer something to do with it um, but I've left it in because I just think it's quite a, a good sort of thing to look at whenever you're looking at angles and polygons okay let's look at our next question question number 23 Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 23. We've been asked to work out the sum of the interior angles for a 40-sided polygon. So to find the sum of the interior angles, we're going to do n, the number of sides, take away 2, multiply by 180. That's a 40-sided polygon, so we're going to do 40, take away 2, which is 38. So it's going to be 38, multiplied by 180. And let's do that. So we're going to do 38 multiplied by 180, and that's equal to 6,840 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 24. So question number 24 says the sum of the interior angles in a polygon is 7,380 degrees. Work out the number of sides the polygon has. So normally what we do is we take the number of sides, we take away 2, and then we multiply by 180, and that gives us the sum of the interior angles. So if we work backwards, if we take the sum of the interior angles and divide by 180, and then add 2, we'll find the number of sides. So 7,380 divided by 180 that's equal to 41 and then if we add 2 41 add 2 is equal to 43 so that means there's 43 sides so the polygon has 43 sides and that's it and that's just working backwards okay let's have a look at our next question question number 25 okay let's look at our next question so question number 25 says a b c d e f again just testing the alphabet is a hexagon a b c d e f so it's a hexagon and we're told the angle b a f to angle d e f so that ratio is six to five the ratio of angle a f e to a b c is four to five and we've been asked to work out the sides of angles b a f so b a f so we want to find the size of that angle then we want to find the size of angle def so def so the size of that angle and then angle abc so abc actually they're the three angles that we've, we've not been given so we just need to work out the size of the three missing angles now there's a right angle so i'm just going to put 90 degrees beside that to begin with and then we're told angle 
BAF to angle DEF. So DEF, we don't have that one and we don't have angle BAF either. Let's go down to this ratio. Angle AFE to AFE. That's fantastic. Angle AFE is 128 degrees. So this angle is 128 degrees. And we're told the ratio of that to angle ABC. So we can find the size of this angle. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. We know the ratio of this angle to this angle is 4 to 5. So that means if we take this angle and divide it by its number in the ratio, which is 4, and then multiply by the other number in the ratio, the 5, we can find the size of this angle. So we do 128 divided by 4. So 128 divided by 4. And it's a calculator question. That's quite nice. 128 divided by 4 is equal to 32. So it's 32. And then if we multiply that by 5, the angle ABC's number in the ratio, so 32 multiplied by 5, that's equal to 160 degrees. So that's fantastic. We found the size that this angle is 160 degrees and again we can check this we can write down 128 to 160 as a ratio and if we simplify it we should get four to five okay next we want to find the size so we find the size of angle abc so abc is 160 degrees fantastic now if we go back up here we told the angle baf so baf we don't have that one and def the ratio of these two angles is six to five Okay, well, what we're going to do is, because that's the only bit of information left we've got, let's add together the angles where we know these four angles. And because it's a hexagon, the angles in a hexagon add up together to give us 720 degrees. So if we add these four angles and take them away from 720 degrees, then that'll tell us what's left for these two angles. And then we can share it in this ratio and find the size of each angle. So let's add together the angles we've got here. So let's do our 160 plus 90 plus 128 plus 144. And because we're adding together four angles, be careful whenever you're typing this into your calculator. Quite often, if someone makes a mistake on these type of questions, it is often whenever they're just typing it into their calculator and they might type the wrong number. And so whenever you add those numbers together, you get 522 degrees. So the sum of these four angles is 522 degrees. So if we do 720 take away 522 degrees, that'll tell us what's left for these two angles. So 720 take away 522 is 198 degrees. So that means there's 198 degrees for these two angles. And we're told the ratio of angle BAF, so that angle, to angle DEF, that angle is six to five. So that's the six in the ratio and that's the five in the ratio. So that means if we just share 198 in that ratio, we can find the size of two angles. So let's add together the numbers in the ratio. So six plus five is equal to 11. And then we'll take the sum of the angles, the 198, what we're sharing, and we'll divide it by the number of parts in the ratio, which is 11. And if we do 198 divided by 11, that's equal to 18. So that means it's 18 in one part. Now we just need to times 18 by 6 and 18 by 5 to find the size of these two angles. So 18 multiplied by 6 is equal to, times by 6, 108 degrees. So the number which is 6 in the ratio, which is angle BAF, so BAF, this angle is 108 degrees. And then finally, this angle here, if we do 18 multiplied by its number in the ratio, which is 5, 18 times 5 is equal to 90. So that means that this angle is 90 degrees, so it's in a right angle, and that's it. And we can check our answers. If we add those angles together, we should get that's equal to 720 degrees. And let's write those in. So angle BAF, so BAF was the one at the top, which is 108 degrees. Angle DEF was 90 degrees. And angle ABC was, if we go back up, 160 degrees. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number 26. So question number 26 says, shown below is part of a regular polygon. So a regular polygon, and we don't know how many sides it's got. A regular hexagon, so we've got this regular hexagon, and a square. And we've been asked to work out how many sides the regular polygon has. So we want to find the number of sides this regular polygon has. Well, if you have a look here, at this point here, the three shapes fit together and they meet at this point here. Now this is a square, so that's a right angle, so that's 90 degrees. This is a regular hexagon, so the angles in a regular hexagon add up together to be 720 degrees. So if we do 720 divided by six, it's a calculator question, that's equal to 120 degrees. So that means this angle is 120 degrees. And that means that because these angles meet together at a point, we can find the size of this interior angle of the regular polygon. So 120 plus 90 is equal to 210 degrees. 
They meet together at a point, so that's 360. So 360 take away 210 is 150 degrees. So that's fantastic. We now know that each interior angle in the regular polygon is 150 degrees. And we've been asked to work out how many sides the regular polygon has. Now, if the interior angle is 150 degrees, we can take that away from 180 to see what the exterior angle is. So 180 take away 150 is equal to 30 degrees. So each exterior angle is 30 degrees. Remember, all the exterior angles will always add together to be 360. So if we take 360 and divide that by 30, that'll tell us how many exterior angles there are. And then if we know how many exterior angles there are, that's how many sides there are. So 360 divided by 30, that's equal to 12. So that means there's 12 exterior angles, that means there's 12 sides, and that's it. So how many sides does the regular polygon have? The answer is 12, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So our next question says, shown below are two identical regular polygons. So we've got this regular polygon here, and this regular polygon here, and an equilateral triangle. So this is an equilateral triangle. That means that each of the sides has got the same length, but that also means that each of the angles is 60 degrees. So that's a 60 degree angle, that's a 60 degree angle, and that's a 60 degree angle at the top there. And we've been asked to work out the number of sides each regular polygon has. So we want to find the number of sides each regular polygon has because we, do, we don't know how many sides they've got. We're just told they're regular polygons. Now, if we have a look here, here we've got one of the interior angles of this regular polygon. And obviously on that side, we've got one as well. But if we focus on this interior angle here, if we carry on this line down like so, we've got our interior angle. And because this is a straight line, we've got our exterior angle there. So we've got our interior and our exterior. Now this angle at the top here, this whole angle would be 60 degrees. So if we do 60 divided by 2, that's equal to 30 degrees. So that means that this angle is 30 degrees and the other side is 30 degrees. Now that means that here we've got this interior angle and the 30 degrees which make us a straight line. So that's the exterior angle, that's the interior angle. So if we do 180 minus 30, that's equal to 150. So that means that each interior angle is 150 degrees. So we've got the interior angle is 150 degrees and the exterior angle would be 30 degrees because here we've got the interior and the exterior. Now, all the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 degrees. So if we take 360 and divide it by the size of each exterior angle, which is 30 degrees, that'll tell us how many exterior angles there are, and that'll mean how many sides the shape's got. So if we do 360 divided by 30, that's equal to 12. So that means there's 12 exterior angles, that means there's 12 sides, and that's it. So how many sides does each regular polygon have? Because they're identical, um, they've got 12 sides, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 28. So question number 28 says, a regular polygon has interior angles that are five times larger than each of its exterior angles. Calculate how many sides it has. And I've just drawn this sketch where we've got this in black here, this interior angle. So this is one of the interior angles. And then here we've got the exterior angle, so that straight line and then that exterior angle there. And we're told that the interior angle is five times larger than its exterior angle. So if the exterior angle, for instance, was X, the interior angle would would be five times larger than that. So that would be five X, five times X is five X. So here we've got our sketch where we've got our interior angle, which is five X and our exterior angle, which is X. And as you can see, the interior angle is five times larger than the exterior angle. And the question says, how many sides does it have? So if we can work out the size of these angles, we can then work out how many sides the polygon has. So remember that the interior angle plus the exterior angle will always add together to be 180 degrees. So five X plus X would be equal to 180 80 degrees because they will make a straight line the interior angle and the exterior angle 5x plus x will be equal to 6x and that's equal to 180 degrees and then if we divide by 6 and divide by 6 we get that x is equal to and 180 divided by 6 is equal to 30 so that means that x is 30 degrees so that means that that is 30 degrees and the interior angle so the exterior angle is 30 degrees and the interior angle 5 times x would be 150 degrees and that means if we check here the interior angle is 5 times larger than the exterior angle so 5 times 30 is 150 degrees fantastic and they add together to be 180 degrees and the question says how many sides does the regular polygon have well remember all the exterior angles will always add together to be 360 so if we do 360 divided by 30 360 divided by 30 is equal to 12 so that means that this regular polygon has 12 sides now you may notice a pattern with the questions that we've done so far the last one was 12 sides the one before was 12 sides it's not always going to be 12 sides i could change this question and so that's that question done and that's the solution done and just to show you that if i was to rub these out and change it slightly just to show you that you can get this question in a slightly different way so if we had that same question again 
and instead of it being five times larger, let's just say three times larger. So a regular polygon has an interior angle that are three times larger than its exterior angle. So calculate how many sides it has. So if the interior, this interior is three times larger than the exterior, let's call the exterior X, and the interior would be three times larger, three times X would be three X. And remember the interior angle plus the exterior angle will always add together to be 180 degrees to make a straight line. So that means that three X, plus x would be equal to 180 degrees. The interior plus the exterior is a straight line, it's 180 degrees. 3x plus x is 4x, and that's equal to 180 degrees. And we want to find the sides of x, so divide by 4 and divide by 4, and we get that x is equal to 45 degrees. So that means that x is 45 degrees, and 3 times x, 3 times 45 would be 135 degrees. And that means that we've got our interior angle, or 135 degrees. You might recognize that from an octagon. And we've got our exterior angle, which is 45 degrees. And we've been asked to calculate how many sides it has. So we could do 360 divided by 45, the size of each exterior angle. Because remember, all the exterior angles will add together to be 360 degrees. And 360 divided by 45 is 8. So that means there's 8 exterior angles, which means there's 8 sides. Now, I've just done that question again, just to show you that you know the answer is not always going to be 12 sides. But um, in that question whenever we approached it it would have been four but based on that question that we had originally which was it's five times larger the shape would have had 12 sides and that's it and that's it so these have been the video solutions the angles and polygons practice questions i really hope you find this video useful if you need any extra help on angles and polygons if you go to corpmavs.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 32 there's a dedicated video tutorial there on finding the angles and polygons and how to answer these questions and um, but this video will focus on the video solutions the practice questions i hope you found it useful if you have found it useful please like it and please subscribe to the youtube channel thank you cheers bye